to bring into service officially this morning. And so I'm going to invite them to come forward and just stand for us here in the front. I would like to read for them a passage of Scripture, which is the mandate, if you like, given by God for how our deacons, what they are, what they should be, and uh, as they prepare for this service. So if you'll just join us up front, thank you. Um, we will just share this text with you, and we trust that it will bless you. It's found in 1 Timothy chapter 3, verses 8 to 13. I wonder why we don't have a picture. Let's unplug that. All right, there we go. It's found in 1 Timothy chapter 3, verses 8 to 13. Think about these, deacons, as, uh, as we read these words and apply them to yourself. And for our other deacons who are already ordained in the congregation, may this be a moment of uh, reflection and of introspection, as well as for our deaconesses. Now, this passage actually follows on from the description of what the elders should be. And so, elders, I guess you can read this uh, for yourselves as well. And it says this, Likewise, deacons must be reverent, not double-tongued, not given to much wine, not greedy for money, holding the mystery of the faith with a pure conscience. But let these also first be tested, then let them serve as deacons, being found blameless. Likewise, for the wives of deacons, they should be reverent, not slanderers, temperate in all things. Let the deacons be the husbands of only one wife, guys, only one, ruling their children and their own households well. For those who have served well as deacons obtain for themselves a good standing and a great boldness in the faith which is in Christ Jesus. I think from that passage you can see that the call to serve as a deacon is a very serious one. It is one which uh, invites us to ensure that we walk closely with the Lord. And we know and we believe as we've already, uh, we know you well and as you have already been serving, uh, unofficially if you want to put it that way as deacons, that you do take this seriously and that you are serious about your walk with the Lord. So at this time I want to invite all the uh, elders in our congregation to come forward as we have a special prayer of ordination and laying on of hands. All the elders, even if you are an elder in another congregation in the Seventh-day Adventist Church, you're welcome to join us. And we're going to kneel up front. Gracious Heavenly Father, you have called and you have set aside through the selection of your church these four new deacons to be of service to you. And Lord, as we lay our hands upon each of them, it is our prayer that you will place your divine hand upon them, that you will bless each of them with your spirit, that you will cause and grant them to have a spirit of wisdom, a spirit of grace, and a spirit of power. We pray that you will guide them and direct them in the fulfillment of each of their duties, that each of them will be co-workers with you, that they will be, as we read about Stephen in the New Testament, filled with the Holy Spirit and with power, that by your grace, these men will grow to know you and to love you more and more each day, that they may need special gifts, Lord, of your Holy Spirit to fulfill their duties that you've called them to, and we would ask that you would bestow these upon them as well. We thank you, Lord, for giving them a heart of service for giving them a willingness to be used by you 
within your church for the salvation of souls and for the prospering of this message. And so again, we simply ask that you will bless them and that as we as a church ordain them, that this will be recognized in heaven and that they will receive the divine ordination and unction. We think of the rest of our deacons who have already been ordained and pray at this time for their reconsecration and their dedication. We think of our deaconesses who serve faithfully, Lord, and pray your blessing upon them as well. In all things, Lord, we simply ask that your will would be done, that your purposes will be accomplished in our individual lives, in this congregation, and throughout the worldwide church of Seventh-day Adventists. May your coming be hastened, we pray, through the service of these deacons, in Jesus' name, amen. This morning I have uh, not prepared a lengthy sermon for you. In fact, we're going to try and overcome our technical bugs this morning and watch another video. So we're going to hope that the Lord blesses us with that one, make sure everything's plugged in here. And I've chosen this video, you can find it on the internet. In fact, if you've spent any time on YouTube, which I'm sure all the young people know exactly what that is, you'll find this video there in various forms. Uh, please ignore the fact that it's slightly less quality than what it should be. I'm sure you will understand this parable, and that's exactly what it is. It is a parable of what it cost heaven for your redemption and for mine. So may God bless you as you consider uh, this theme this morning. Got sound?
few verses that I'd like to share with you before we separate for our foot washing. Romans 5 verse 8 says, But God demonstrates His own love toward us, and that while we were yet, yet sinners, Christ died for us. 2 Corinthians 5 verse 21 says, For God the Father made Him, Jesus Christ, who knew no sin to be sin for us, that we might become the righteousness of God in Him. And Isaiah 53 verses 4 and 5 says, That surely He has borne our griefs and carried our sorrows, yet we esteemed Him stricken, smitten of God and afflicted. But He was wounded for our transgressions, he was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him, and by his stripes we are healed. Let us pray together. Heavenly Father, thank you for being willing to sacrifice your Son, that this world full of people might have hope. What will it be on that day, Lord, when we look into your face and we read your eyes and to know that you consider it all worthwhile for such is the love and the value that you place upon us. Thank you for so loving us that you sent your son to die in our place. That if we choose to believe on him, we will never die, but we will have eternal life. In Jesus' name, amen. We'll divide at this time for foot washing. To get us started as we prepare for the communion, I've got a little item of music here which um, I'll play for you just for your meditation, along with a little slideshow, as soon as I get this plugged in. There we go.
in prayer. Dearest Jesus, it is with a big thank you that we come before you this morning, Lord, for that huge price that you paid for each and every one of us, Lord. Father, I thank you for your son, Jesus Christ, who died for me, Lord, who died for us here today and for the whole world. And Father, we just like to say thank you uh, for Jesus, thank you for your spirit, Lord, and thank you for this wonderful sacrifice. Heavenly Father, now that Jesus has paid this big ransom for us, Lord, that we now have life through him. Jesus said, I am the bread of life, Lord, and uh, as his body was punished and, and uh, treated harmfully, Lord, for our sakes, we realize, Lord, how valuable uh, this gift was that is given to us, Lord, freely, and we accept this gift today. But, Lord, we're not worthy of it. And again, we pray, Lord, please forgive us for where we've wronged you, where we've transgressed your will or your law. And we thank you that we have forgiveness in this wonderful gift. In Jesus' name, amen.
Did we miss anyone? Very well. In 1 Corinthians chapter 11, from verse 23, Paul writes the following. He says, For I received from the Lord that which I also delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus, on the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Shall we slip to our knees and continue in the frame of prayer? Loving Heavenly Father, we just thank you for the sacrifice that you gave us in sacrificing your son Jesus on the cross for us. Lord, we just have so much to be thankful for and to be amazed at your wonderful love that you have shown to us. Lord, as Jesus hung on that cross, and even before that, when he was whipped and beaten, his blood was shed on our, on our behalf. Lord, we just thank you that um, it is a cleansing symbol for us. And Lord, we, as we partake of this juice this morning, Lord, we just thank you once more. And also look forward to carrying out the invitation that you gave us at the Last Supper when you said... You would not partake of it until we took partake of it in heaven with you. And we thank you for this. In Jesus' name, amen.
the rest of the passage in 1 Corinthians says the following. In the same manner, Jesus also took the cup after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death till he comes. Well, it's time to come to close our communion service this morning. We'd like to close it with, with prayer. And while we're singing, we'll ask the deaconesses to come and cover the table back up. So could we all stand as we sing our last song today? And uh, special thanks to our musicians who have given us a wonderful um, praise this morning in music. Thank you. Thank you.